Well, I was just saying um, to anyone listening that the concept of the inner child for me was such a revelation and it came in my journey after several years of kind of conventional talk therapy and then this concept of the inner child and the inner child work came along through a coach who you know and, <laughs> and it was like oh this is the missing link it just mm -hmm. took me past the story of my my conscious mind and into what I now know is my subconscious and my unconscious mind. And that's something that, that we've been talking about in the group this week are the levels of the mind, conscious, subconscious, mm -hmm. and unconscious. And I feel like this inner child work gets us right to the core of those subconscious patterns and behaviors. Mm -hmm. and, and It can. It definitely yeah. can. Yeah. Well, I want to um, give you guys a little introduction um, of Deanna. We met in Charleston many years ago. And Deanna, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, where you came from? <laughs> so I was born in Romania, and it's a developing country in Eastern Europe. And I grew up in communism until age nine. So that kind of influenced a little bit my understanding and appreciation for freedom. Um, and then I moved here when I was 22, so I've been here for 15 years, so now I'm 37. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I, um, I've been a photographer for 10 years, photographer and videographer, and, t and four years ago, I finally had the courage and the guts to listen to my heart and do what I have been called to my whole life, which is to work with people uh, on their emotions, on their hearts, and to look into the unseen, deeper aspects of our beings. I have just, I feel really <laughs> privileged to be your friend and to be able to have seen you step into this and the courage <laughs> and the vulnerability. It's just it's so inspiring. <laughs> so Thank you. And I, I have to, you know, tie it, tying it in with the subject of today, you know, we'll get more into it, but that's one of the things that the inner child can do when we relate with the inner child and we have a conversation with them. They can give us permission to play and be free in our choices and not have so much attachment to the outcome and simply be just try new things. Yeah. You know, when you think about a child making a um, sandcastle on the beach, they don't have to take it home. They know they're not going to take it home, but they do their best anyway. And for two or three hours, they're there completely. So uh, we'll get into what a balanced, healthy, connected with inner child can do for our careers, for our lives, for our relationships. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I can see my own, my, my actual outer child in my mind. And, you know, the, the free, freedom she has just in expressing herself and um, and also what popped into my mind was concentration. We tend mm -hmm. to think, or at least I have tended to think of concentration as being sort of synonymous with serious, mm -hmm. but a child when they're playing is completely in concentration. And I, I, <laughs> I'm gonna make a note of that because that was an aha moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> the playfulness and concentration can really go hand in hand and, and, right. and present being able to be really present is what I'm, my connection that's happening right now. <laughs> yes, and independent at the same time. We like to think that children are needy and they have to be attached to us. But when they're playing and they're in their element and they're happy and content and they've been fed and they've been taken care of and you just let them, they are in flow. They're in flow yes. with that creative mode. They're in connection with a higher source that is taking care of them. <laughs> yes. Yes, that is beautiful. Well, just how would you, if you were going to write a textbook definition of this concept of the inner child, how would you define it? I'll just do it through my own perspective and kind of how I explain to clients when we work together. So for me, the inner child is a part of ourselves that is vulnerable, sensitive, sometimes needy sometimes completely adorable and sweet <laughs> and, and charming um, 
And that needs to be taken care of, addressed, looked at, and parented. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a part of us. It's that part of us that cries at a commercial that is touching. Is that part of us that wants to take home every puppy, every kitten, every <laughs> sweet animal? So it's that part of us that is childlike. I love it. I love it. How do you use this concept with clients in your coaching practice? Most people have an attitude of resistance towards that part of us, that vulnerable, sensitive part that's not in control, mm -hmm. that doesn't have all the answers, that is sensitive and needy. So we have like, um, and so people come to me and are like, how do I turn this off? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Let's fix this. <laughs> yes. Yes, I want this yeah. to be gone. I need to be in control at all times. I cannot cry. I cannot, you know, I can't lose control. I can't cry in the car with my children or with my husband. I have to, you know. And so I begin by facilitating a conversation. So mm -hmm. I say, can we find just for a week or two or a month or two some tolerance, some coexisting with this part of you just to get to talk to it and to see what it needs because emotions for me are always messengers that are trying to tell us that there's something to look at. There's something for us. There's a gift for us. Would we like it? <laughs> I so, so relate to what exactly what you just said. I have a very similar, I think, relationship with my emotions. It's a, it's a, Hey, look, look, look here. <laughs> there's something here for you to, to see, to pay attention to, to hear a message, mm -hmm. sometimes from my inner child. <laughs> so some people are embarrassed, a lot of people are embarrassed by their inner child and they like to put them in the closet. And so mm -hmm. that usually shows up in life in it's either self-sabotage or it's um, extreme emotions, the equivalent of what would be a temper tantrum to a child. Mm -hmm. So the children, the inner children, let us know, you know, it's not okay for you to put me in the closet. I'm here to help you. I'm here as your gift. Use me. Don't put, put me away. And so I go and take the children out of the closet. And I, <laughs> and I sit them down and I try to have my clients have a conversation with that inner part of them that is vulnerable, that is usually they're ashamed of it. And, and so the first question is, what do you need? And so I'll give you an example of the first time I connected with my inner child through my own strength, because I think it was done a couple of times in sessions with coaching um, with a coach, but it never was as powerful until I did it on my own. And so I went to yoga. This was, you know, after you and I became friends and I became more active into yoga. So I was moving my body and there was this constant just, when I go into Savasana, just this welling up of emotion happening inside of me, and I, I would cry. I would cry, just sit there, and just tears would be streaming down. Not the convulsing, you know. Yeah. But yeah. there was a tenderness inside of me, a, um, a sorrow, a sadness, a wound that was trying to get my attention. Mm -hmm. And so usually I'd be like, oh, God, here you go again. You're crying in yoga. So that was the first, that used to be my reaction. And since being introduced to this idea that there, there is, you know, just kind of I'm a very visual person. So there's an inner child who's kind of coming at me and tugging at my sleeve or tugging at my skirt. And so there in Savasana, and I found enough space and grace to begin my conversation. And I said, what do you need? <laughs> What is this tenderness about? What is this crying about? What do you need? I'm writing, and that, I, down. I'm writing that down to remind <laughs> my participants. <laughs> okay. And so I was imagining I'm asking a child, what do you need? What do you come into me for? I, yeah. you know, from that, at that point, I hadn't had the love to open myself up and to say, what do you need? I, I'd be like, what do you need? <laughs> Go oh, ahead. Yeah. Use your words. <laughs> Don't give me tea. <laughs> that actual parents do experience point or another with their children. 
And uh, the first answer I got, and this is what shook me and, and helped me really create, was the foundation of a beautiful relationship that I'm thoroughly enjoying, was I need parents. Mm. Mm. I need parents. And that was just so powerful for me to think that even though we're adults, there are parts of us that still need parenting. They still need looking at, interacting with, taking care of, supporting. Those are our vulnerable parts. Those are inner children. So I, I was touched by that. I need parents. Can you find me some parents? <laughs> Adult, <laughs> yeah. <Yana. it>, <laughs> mine. And the other was, I needed to be okay for me to cry. Mm-hmm that I needed to be okay for me to have an expression of my emotions. So I was like, wow, this child is pretty magical. <laughs> <laughs> and so since yeah. then I've created an exercise that I do with my clients and I call it um, des parent design exercise. Cool. And so we do mom and dad. And so we go to mom and we think about our actual parents or caregivers when we grew up and we write down everything that worked mm -hmm. you know so my mom was always willing to listen to me and she would wait until I finished what I was saying before she would give me any feedback so we would write down everything that worked and then we think about what didn't work you know like my dad always punished me when I made a mistake okay how would you like to reparent yourself if you could be the ideal parent to that vulnerable child, that vulnerable part of you, how would you like to react to yourself when you've made an error or, a, or what we call a mistake or when something didn't come out the way you intended it to or, you, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> the words came out differently and you know that, you know, how would you like, how would you like your dad to have reacted to you? when you made a mistake. And so we designed these parents on paper. And so I have this, and when I work with clients and they come in and they are like, you know, ah, I totally messed this up at work. I could have gotten a raise. I didn't this time around because I slept in the night before the evaluation. And so we're like, okay, so this is what you wrote down. Mm -hmm. That what you would like for the ideal parent when you make an error is to offer you grace and support and understanding and remind you that every mistake is an opportunity to become a more wholesome, more loving person. So I hold them up to being the parent that they claim they want to be by having that, you know, profile that they made. Yeah. And so that's an exercise I recommend. Love it. You know, yeah. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I um I was just reading the the next question I was going to ask you. Oh, okay, here we go. What are some things people tell you after they've made this connection? What's some of the feedback you've gotten from clients? Well, some of the people are surprised at how well they can work with their inner child and how the inner child can be supportive to them. Mm -hmm. And so that shows up through creativity and new ideas at work. And so adults have adult hats on, but then sometimes we need to see a new way to tackle an issue or we need to write the book or, um, you know, there are different ways to use creativity at work. Well, when you're in touch with your inner child, not only are you responding to their needs and paying attention to what their emotions are trying to communicate with you, but you also get the happy child. You get the balanced child. So think about how rewarding and adorable a child who's swirling around and is fulfilled and is taken care of is and how creative and the things that came out of their, they, they come out of their mouths are just so mind blowing sometimes. And so my, my clients often are like, wow, I, I, at first I thought it's like one more responsibility. Isn't it enough that I have mm -hmm. my own child to take care of mm -hmm. at home? Now you're telling me I have another one inside. <laughs> <laughs> 
So first it's this reaction of, oh, okay, I have, I have to take care of the child that's been in the closet for a while. I have to comb her hair and change her clothes and feed her for once, you know? And so at first there's this reaction of want more responsibility, but then they're just blown away of how rewarding it can be to have a healthy relationship with that part of you. Yeah. That's awesome. That's exactly how I've experienced it. <laughs> where, where that that um, and now that I actually have a child, and I I started doing this work before I, I had a child, and I really didn't spend a lot of time with children. Um, so you know, and, and maybe because I my I was so out of touch with my inner child, I wasn't really that comfortable with children. You know, so I was kind of like. Mm, Kind of that feeling of like, yes, yeah, too too needy, <laughs> and I think that de definitely um, paralleled the level of neediness of my inner child, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, as I have learned how to, first of all, communicate with her and ask her what she needs, and even using some of these these parenting techniques of of asking. Um, I love your parent design exercise. I'm going to, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that out. <laughs> mine, mine was just a simple, like, okay, this is, this is what I'm feeling. What age does this feel like? Right. And which parent does this child feel like it needs love from or attention from? And does, does she need to be seen or heard? Right. Or is there a word that she's, looking for right. that kind of and 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 like you described probably the most profound connection I've had with it was just with myself like laying right. in bed feeling the feeling and kind of going with you know my my own um compass with it mm -hmm. so yeah <laughs> so I think what I'll do is I'll probably um email my group this this concept of the parent design exercise and get everybody to um, try that out and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything else you want to add? I know you and I could talk for an hour easily. <laughs> so easily. I do want to recommend a couple of books. So there's yes, this great book, idea. Um, by Marie Louise von Franz. She was, um, she worked with Carl Jung for a really long time, which was, um, he came up with the idea of the archetype of the inner child. That so is amazing. I never it. knew that. And I was hoping you would bring some information like that to our yes. conversation. Like, where yes. did this even come from? This is not just sort of new agey, you know. I mean, nothing, there's nothing wrong with new agey. But, you know, that this is, ties into what are the foundations of modern psychology. And Absolutely. That, that, yes. Um, Era. So will you post that in the comments, the title and author? Yes, I will. The other one I was going to, yeah, the other one is uh, Homecoming by John Bradshaw, which you might be familiar with already. But that book took me three years to go through, and I had to take, a, take breaks several times because it goes into every age of your childhood. Oh, wow. And addresses every memory. And so you practically go... So that goes into a little bit deeper than, you know, a 20 minute conversation, but it's yeah. going to claim your inner child. So it's a visualization, repeat a visualization where you go to your infant child above your bed as a, in an infant and you say, I'm so happy you were born. I am so happy you are a boy or a girl. I have been waiting for you. There are no needs that are too great for me. So there are some scripts that that book give you that you can use when, you know, the inner child shows up and you, like you ask the age and you may identify what age this wound is at. There's some scripts that are given for you that can help you claim that child, soothe that child and make peace with it. And what is the point of the work with the inner child is so that you're more of a whole person. You're integrating this vulnerable, sensitive part of you, this creative, adorable part of you, so that it's not somewhere over there in the closet where people shouldn't see it, but you're showing up as a whole. And most people just simply look more adorable and more lively <laughs> and more playful once they've integrated their inner child. 
Yes, I love that. And it just occurred to me to tie this in to where we're going with this workshop, why we would spend some time with with the subconscious and the inner child. And what I'm hoping people will see is that because our, our behaviors and patterns come from our subconscious mind, when there is an unmet need that, mm -hmm. that we are getting met through food, which is kind of what we're mainly going to focus on here, but this could be through anything, through relationships, alcohol, whatever, when we're getting that need met through a behavior that we've decided is unhealthy and we don't want to do it anymore and we try to change it from our conscious mind with our thinking and that is not lining up with what's happening in our subconscious, we fail and we sabotage and, we, and we're confused and we don't understand because why can't I do this thing that seems so logical? Why do I keep choosing this food that's so unhealthy for me? And for me, this inner child piece and connecting to why I would be doing that from a deeper level has freed me to be able to make choices that are, are, are more in alignment with my whole self and to be able to use my conscious mind as the tool that it is, <laughs> you know, the creative tool that it is, because now there's a a space for that to happen where the inner child is, has had her needs met. I hope that made sense. <laughs> it made so much sense to me. And that's what I call self-parenting. Yeah. Because when you think about children and food, if you give a box of Oreo to a child, they're going to eat the whole box. But self-parenting says, okay, part of you wants to eat the whole box, but here's what we're going to do. I call it inner child negotiation you're gonna get one tonight and tomorrow we can look at maybe getting another one yeah right and so they they put the box away but many times if we don't if we're not connected with our inner child they come out of the closet climb up in the kitchen open and the they're cupboard. like you haven't been paying attention to me <laughs> this is how i'm getting my needs met <laughs> this yeah, is how so i'm feeling love and comfort and attention, even negative attention through self-judgment, it's just right. like, it's just like, you know, um, outer child behavior, right? The children who are acting out are seeking attention and our inner child who's, who's needing us to engage in these behaviors to get comfort and love and attention. It's really the same, it's really the same thing. Probably the most important part of self-parenting is creating that internal boundary to be able to say, no, I love you. And yes, you can have a temper tantrum and no, yeah. you cannot have the whole box. Mm -hmm. Many talk about external boundaries with other people, but there's also an internal boundary with myself. And that's when I'm parenting myself, when I can say no to a part of me that wants to throw away the 20 days of whole 30. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, all of that. Uh, well, again, I know we could keep going, and um, I hope that everyone enjoys this a, a, a tenth of the amount that I have enjoyed this. <laughs> Thank you so much, Deanna. My pleasure.